Magic Mike, what's happening? Well, you tell me, sir. Well, are we going live or tape? We're going live. Ooh, you're a brave man. Well, I... Stuff flies out of my mouth, Mike. But... I've, I've been down here uh, on the air at this station 24 years, so I've made all the mistakes. And <laughs> some of them were pretty fun. I'll see if I can get you thrown off. Sammy, before we get live here, yeah, I want to thank you for your hospitality. Uh, was at your birthday party in 99 and 2000. Oh, you're kidding. Got a picture with Entwistle and yourself. Oh, wow. Hey, that's that's pretty damn special. Yeah, I was there with Bubba. And, oh, yeah. And Ronnie. Remember Bubba? Yeah, yeah, Bubba and Ronnie. That's right, because Ronnie took the picture with Entwistle, because Ronnie looks like Pete Townsend. Exactly. And it was Roger Daltrey, Pete Townsend, and, and, and John Entwistle. <laughs> yeah. No, but we always have a great time. We just, you know, 9-11 screwed up the following year, but... Well, you play some to come great golf. This play some this birthday bash has turned into the craziest thing. It's just uh, play some great golf down there. Oh man, it's awesome golf. But I don't play golf. But I I, I go down the courses with my buddy, and, and I hit the ball, and I run and get it, and I hit it and run it again, <laughs> and I I get my my four mile five mile run. It. <laughs> um, maybe after we chat, you could do a little. You know, we can record a little drop thing for yeah. hey, we're coming to town. No problem. we got a great venue for you. This is going to be a fun, fun event. So it's what a, is this thing? It's, there's going to be a our, bunch of hot air balloons? It's a balloon festival, um, three-day festival. The balloons are in the morning. Yeah. The venue's a water park, so there's all those water rides. And then yeah. in the evening, the concerts. Wow. How Let's go people? live. We'll talk about it in front of people. Okay. KLAQ and 95.5 FM help Hasso's best rock, and that's Sammy Hagar. There's only one way to rock. I gave you a hint earlier that you should be tuned in about this time, and I would have a surprise for you. And it is the Red Rocker himself. Hello, Sammy. How you doing, Mike? Pretty well. Good well, to have you. let me tell you something, man. You guys are putting on this big old <laughs> crazy balloon fest. I'm glad in front of people. i got to ask you, what in the hell is this thing? Well, we have a three-day festival, Memorial Day weekend, every year. Yeah. It's our 18th annual, and it's balloons in the morning, bikinis and splashing on the wet and wild rides all day, every day, and then concerts in the evening, of course. You're well, you can roll that bikini right into the evening, too, right? <laughs> A lot of people roll them right off in the evening. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like my kind of gig. It's so crazy. Anytime anybody asks me to play anywhere, you know, my band, we're geared up, we're ready to go. And then I ask later what it's all about. Well, you know, this is an outdoor venue, and it is really just a... A great place for how many people at home? Oh, we'll have six, seven thousand, maybe twenty million people. That's plenty. It's going to be really cool. All right. Well, I'm in. It sounds like it's going to be fun. I hope everyone knows exactly what kind of a deal I got going now. It's like my band. We've been together since Van Halen, almost seven years now, and we've done five hundred shows. And I'm telling you, we got this party honed down to like it's a fine art. And uh, just when you know. <laughs> When we hit the stage, I don't want anybody out there going, huh? What? Well, <laughs> we got waitresses in bikinis. I got four waitresses, two bartenders. You know, bring about 20 cases of tequila, cobble wobble with us. And, and we just filled this party. We got 75 people on stage. Are you ready for that? Well, we're going to have a little less. I what do you to mean them. less? <laughs> maybe, we're going to have 75 people. Maybe on more. Stage. <laughs> maybe more. But those are just details. It really is a great party. And, you know, I was at uh, some of your practice party sessions, the birthday gigs. 99 and 2000, I was at Cabo Well, Lava. then you know what, what I'm talking about. Oh, and it's awesome. And you visited El Paso, I think, uh, four years ago, three, four years ago, downtown. And that was a great setup with the tequila and whatnot. <laughs> I'm coming back from Cabo one year, and I had uh, been given a bottle of your tequila. And I put it in my golf bag. And somewhere between Cabo and El Paso, it broke. <laughs> So your golf bag still smells like tequila, right? Yeah, little, me. little tiny, teeny slivers of that blue glass that you wrap it in. <laughs> well, you know, maybe it helps hit the ball just that much farther, you know? Yeah, talking about your band, Mona is a wonderful person. I had a chance to visit with her. and Mona's the most awesome female bass player on the planet, and she can hold her own with Michael Anthony and any of them guys. When Mikey plays us with us, you know, he comes out and jams right. with us all the time. Man, she gets up there, and she rocks right with him. And the other guys you got uh, on the tour, you got Jesse. On yep. keys, right? Jesse Harms. What's yep. his background? Where'd you hook up with him? Oh, Jesse, man, he's he's like the kind of like the songwriter. Uh, he co-writes songs with me once in a while. Kind of helps produce. He's kind of a real technician guy. Most, you know, nowadays most keyboards players they're basically computer wizards, you know, because the the keyboards are just a couple little black and white keys on there that you just program any sound you want. You hit it and it sounds like anything you want it to sound like. So, 
Jesse's kind of a, a technician kind of dude, and uh, he's a great player and a great singer himself. And David? David Lauser, my oldest living friend. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we uh, man, we took it uh, from, he was 14 years old and playing drums in, in the first wow. band we were in together. And, uh, you know, we, we've come a long way. And uh, and Vic Johnson, the, the baddest axe man on the planet. And uh, we, we uh we, like I said, we got 500, uh, 500 shows under our belt, so we're a, a well-oiled, tight-knit rock and roll jam band. Was that because we don't we don't play the same set every night? You know, we go out with about sixty or seventy songs to choose from that we know well, and and we start with you know we got about five different songs to start with and about five different songs to end with, and everything in between is just at the moment. I'm going, you know, these people need to hear like you know right now, right now, or these people need to hear. You know, heavy metal right now, and I just hollered out, and we hit it. It's wow, awesome. That's fantastic. You know, uh, talking about uh, the first band with David, was it the Castillas or the? Oh, oh, oh no, no, no the fabulous Castillas. Wait a minute, you're going way back on me, Mike. Well, well you said the very, easy now, brother. Very first. That band wasn't you had. even a band. That was me and a guitar player. We didn't even have a drummer. <laughs> Must have been Dust Cloud. No, it, it was a group called the Mobile Home Blues Band. Oh, there's a great name. <laughs> <laughs> Our dream was to get a to get a mobile home that and, and a car that could pull it, you know, <laughs> first things first. And maybe some turquoise. And put all of our equipment in there, and all of us just drive across the country and play any time, you know, any place. We just pull up places and unload and start playing. That was our dream. We never quite, we never got to buy that, that trailer, but uh, well, you're uh, thank God the, things have worked out okay for us. You're living the dream. I mean, what are you doing, driving around, flying around? But this is when we were kids, man. We wanted a trailer. Can you imagine? I can imagine. <laughs> there were some things that I wanted when I was a kid. <laughs> uh, most of them came true. If I, I found out if I worked hard enough, I could make anything happen, right? <laughs> That's right. That's you know, the bottom line on it, man. It was kind of hard work, uh, you know, getting through the right people to invite you to this party. But I persevered. Well, you, wait, wait a minute, Mike. You didn't have my home phone number? Well, you know, the the office won't let me dial to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the whole thing. You know how to reach me through Cabo, man. You should have just taken a trip down there and got me. Yeah, I wanted to do it the right way. <laughs> and, you know, I was you were, I was kind of backing you off from the people on the stage because I haven't told the audience yet. Oh, excuse me. See, we were going to have a contest and get those people to be on the stage with you. And well, now, you'll have the contest and now anyway, you, right? And now you've got to know it. what's going on. See, I cannot throw a party without people all around me. It's like just like... The Cabo Wabo, when you walk in there, we're on stage, and you got these people all over the place. Every, it's up close and personal. So all these other bigger shows, I'm spoiled. I like being up close and personal, but I want to play for more people. So we just have up close and personal on stage. We have the Cabo Wabo on stage, and then the thousands of people out in front. It's interactive. They're just partying with us. And as soon as some guy drinks too much and pukes on my drummer or something, we throw him out and bring a new person up out of the audience. So well, that, it's, just, it's very interactive, right? That makes a, <laughs> lot, that makes a lot of sense. It's Tell, starting to make more sense to me every day. How much of your year do you spend in Mexico? Probably five months. You know, unless When I'm on tour, I usually come straight you know, down there from the tour. And right before we go on tour... We used to go down there and rehearse at the club, you know, because right. it's, it's 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 real real. I I hate rehearsing in a you know a dry um, rehearsal studio with nobody there, you know, and it sounds bad. It's all small and your ears are ringing. So we just go down to the club and rehearse. And, and that's a real people. That's a real nice venue for yeah it's shows. I mean, fifty people and you got the and, pool uh, tables. Everybody uh, high on the same drug, tequila. <laughs> that's right. And the pool <laughs> you know, tables. It's really bad when you mix whiskey and tequila. And, and beer and wine and vodka. You know, you, you don't want to mix those people together. you got to have everybody on the same thing. Sammy, you and I are about the same age. I think you got a couple of months on me. But Everybody's but now it's all months. about it's about quality, not quantity, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and why spoil that tequila with something else? <laughs> I agree. <laughs> that beer chaser stuff, it doesn't work. <laughs> well, work. that's when you're really thirsty. You know, you don't want to chug lug tequila. But that's it, right. A great quote uh, that I remember from an interview you did a long time ago. It was on your website. It says... And this, I'm quoting you, if they quoted you right, I hope. I like to give people hope and confidence to maybe help them walk right through that door. And you're talking about what when you say that door? Well, you know, up to, the, to, to wherever it is your dreams or your goals are. You know, some people, you get so close sometimes and, and, uh, to your goals or your dreams, and you give up. And, and it's because you get beaten down on the way, and so many people do, oh, you're crazy, that'll never happen, and, and you can't do this, and you can't do that. And and by the time you 
you never even know how close you are sometimes. I've seen so many people give up too soon, and I've done it myself, to where you say, oh, psh, that ain't going to happen, and you realize that you were one inch away. So, you know, sometimes that last little boost is what gets you through that door, and all of a sudden you realize you're in the room, and you're going, you know what? <laughs> this is I'm I'm here, you know. That's right. This is it. Now I can start doing what you know, doing it. So I like to give people that kind of hope with songs like, you know, dreams and and uh, songs like uh, Give to Live and I don't know. I, I, well, I guess I've written a lot of them. You know, Give to Live is my very favorite one. That's kind of like that uplifting. I mean, that's to me is just the most magical song that I've ever heard. You know, I mean, it's it's a wonderful song. Yeah, it's it's funny when those songs come out. I don't set out to write them. You know, you, I just I pick up my guitar, and I got something in me, and next thing you know, it starts coming together, and then I realize, oh boy, this is another one of those songs. You know, Eagles Fly. And, I mean, I don't know how That's many I've written. Song. You know, on the, uh, uh, probably one per album. You know, there's always that one uplifting song, and uh, I, I, it's always my favorite. It's always the one that always sticks in the set in concert. You know, it's hard to it's hard to throw a song like that out because when you play it, it brings in a, about a special feeling that's. Uh, that's just irreplaceable. When, you know, I'm either rocking or lifting you. <laughs> when, when it starts coming, can you feel your heart throbbing? Because that's got to be where it comes from. Oh, yeah. yeah and, the, and the girls like it, and that makes me happy to see girls happy. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know exactly. I mean, the guys are easy mean. to please, right? Uh, usually, Buy them a drink, rock them hard, maybe take them for a ride in a fast car. Girls, you know, they'll go for that a couple of times, and they're wanting some else. Some snorkeling. <laughs> yeah, a little snorkeling. <laughs> Submarine races, right? <laughs> You're killing me. You're going to get me thrown off. No, no, submarine races. That's what girls like. <laughs> you grew up in California. You probably watched those out there on the beach yes, a few times. Sir, I've been in a few of them myself. Actually, I was in one this morning, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe maybe I'll get up on stage and sing uh, that old uh, Tell Them I'm Surfing. Hey, whatever you want to do. You know, it's like my show is very interactive. Like I said, it's not it's not like some contrived thing. We go out and do the same thing night after night. Man, I wake up in the morning and I don't even think about what I'm going to do on stage that night because I know that it's just going to happen when I get there, you know. Well, in a little over a week, Sammy, at Wet n' Wild, I'll shake hands with you and introduce you to a whole bunch of our listeners and we'll have a party. I'm ready, man. We're flying in the day before, get good and partied up, get good and acclimated, and we're going to do the thing and we're staying overnight again because I'm sure I won't be able to fly. We're, I mean, we're going I mean, to take can care fly. of you. I mean, I can't, I don't fly my own plane. But I wouldn't be able to fly after this show, would I? Well, it's partly the walking up the stairs to get in the plane. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, you can't Getting pour... through airport security. I've never been able to pour myself upstairs. <laughs> yeah, so we'll probably be in town for a few days, and we'll, we'll, make, a, we'll make a big deal out of it. Well, so. we'll make you as welcome as we can. And as I said, everybody in town really looking forward to your appearance at the Balloon Festival and meeting those wobbos up close and... It's going to be great. Right on, man. We'll turn it into the Cabo Wobble. We'll make the whole town of El Paso. That's pretty close to Mexico. We can say, hey, look, just pretend like you went across the border without without all the difficulties, <laughs> without being searched. Well, you know, the difficulties coming back, and some of that's exactly. good. Some of that's searched. good. Some is good, and some is bad. Sammy, I appreciate your time. I'm going to play Give to Live, and then we're going to play that uh, right now, the one that Michael Anthony is uh, Oh, from in the them. new live CD. Right. Oh, talk to me, Chief. And by the way, Hallelujah is going through the roof. Everybody loves that song. Oh, man, I just saw the video for it. We just finished the video. It's a live concert we did, and it rained. Uh, we, we played in San, uh, San Bernardino about uh, 10 days ago, and it poured rain. I mean, poured rain. And we did the concert anyway, and we shot this video, and it's so awesome because everybody's wet with umbrellas and raincoats, and I'm out wrenched it just it's got a soulfulness to it man it's like you've never seen so i'm really excited about hallelujah hallelujah as a matter of fact so uh all right i'll see everybody there all right thank you very much sammy for your Please. time and uh we'll see you in a little over a week and thanks uh thanks for being the red rocker el paso's only got a week to prepare for this oh <laughs> there are gonna be some people with headaches okay see ya <laughs> Are you still there, my friend? Absolutely. Mike, you're cracking me up. You we were so <laughs> casual on the air. It was like there was one, not one thing changed from our conversation before we went on the air. I like that. That is... Uh, I like that. Magic Mike. <laughs> That's what I call professionalism, okay?